Yes. Well, when we're done, honey. Yes, honey. Yes, honey. Okay. What if you take a kitten nap right now and then I'll give you one? Okay? My Aria kitten, are you going to be in the video today? Yes. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Anna. And I'm Brian. And we are Those, Those Annoying, Annoying Vegans. Vegans. And today we are making one of my favorite Italian recipes ever. And by favorite, I mean maybe one of 10 because there are a lot. We are making sweet pea risotto. As you guys know, risotto, your average recipe, tends to have a lot of animal products. Chicken stock, you have dairy in the form of copious amounts of Parmesan cheese, you have butter, sometimes even seafood. So of course, we're going to veganize, veganize it. it. That's right, in addition to the non-dairy butter and the go veggie Parmesan cheese, we'll be using our very own homemade veggie stock, mm -hmm. which we showed you guys how to make. It's practically free. And the link is in the description. <laughs> and of course, this recipe is delicious, affordable, and easy to make. So let's make it. Let's make it. One of our viewers was like, where do you guys go when you turn around and walk yeah. towards the sink? <laughs> it's called a transition. <laughs> All right, this is filmmaking. There's a narrative. There's storytelling involved in editing. Aria Rose says you need stuff. to chill. This is so good. Go veggie is a powdered Parmesan, but mm -hmm. there are plenty of vegan meltable Parmesan cheeses out there that you can use. Make sure you continuously stir. Get a good arm workout stirring mm -hmm. that risotto. And you might not even use the full amount of broth. You can sort of tell when the rice stops absorbing the broth mm -hmm. as quickly as it used to. So gauge it and add your colorful veggies to it. Whole plant foods on the side in addition to the whole plant foods that are in here. But Brian, this is carbs. Oh my gosh. And carbs are horrible for us. Oh, that's right. I read that on the internet, so it must be true. Yes, risotto is mostly rice, and rice is in that category of carbohydrate. <gasps> it's over here in the naughty category. Hey, if you're gonna eat a bowl of rice, you might as well eat a bowl of sugar, right? Because sugar and grain, same exact thing. Your body makes no distinction between the two. We had one of our viewers comment and say that her family was giving her grief because they were saying that fruits were actually just as bad as a Snickers bar and yeah. that she might as well just have a Snickers bar. Instead of a banana or something. Because the sugar in both is the same. So that gave us <laughs> the idea for this video <laughs> because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to differentiating types of carbohydrates. So what is a carbohydrate? It's an interesting word because it kind of sounds like carbon and hydrate. Which means water. Must be because it's a molecule that contains carbon and H2O. And it is in fact a very clean burning source of fuel for the body. The homo sapien body prefers glucose mm -hmm. as our fuel source. That, Especially up here. Yeah, that's what we run on. We have stores in our body called glycogen stores. When you eat carbohydrate, your body burns it 
where it stores it as glycogen to be burned later. Many a keto, paleo, low carb, high fat person will tell you that uh, carbs are very bad because if you eat too many carbs, you get fat. What people are often referring to is refined sugar. Soda and candy and cookies and candy bars and ice cream and high fructose corn syrup, all the artificial stuff that we've created. Industrialized as a sugars. Species. We've taken everything, we've lumped it all together. We say sugar is bad and sugar is a carb, so carbs are bad. Wrong. There is a difference between sugar that's naturally found in a plant food versus sugar that we've pulled out of the plant food and we've put it into something that's got a colorful package on the grocery store shelf that makes the kids really want to eat it. In fact, there was a clinical study where they gave patients a glass of water with three tablespoons of sugar. Kind of sounds like... Soda. Soda. And what they found is that their blood sugar spikes and then it crashes way, way down because your body, when it gets that sugar spike, it panics, and so it starts pumping insulin, pumping insulin. It doesn't, it just goes like, I, I don't know, just take it all. So then the insulin helps all that blood sugar into your cells, mostly your muscle cells, and your blood sugar then drops to below normal levels, below the level that you even started at. So then your body thinks it's starving because you had such a dramatic drop in your blood sugar, and it starts to release fat. Then they said, okay, well, what if we add fruit? They added berries. So now you have more sugar. The sugar in the berries plus the white sugar that was in the water. Patients exhibited a spike in their sugar and then their blood sugar levels gradually dropped mm -hmm. and leveled out. There wasn't that hypoglycemic dip. So they said, well, it must be the fiber, right? Because fiber helps slow down the absorption of the sugar into your bloodstream. And then they tried a third method, which was berry juice instead of the berries. And what they found was that the blood sugar did spike, but it didn't bottom out. It leveled. Because much like the fiber in the skin of the fruits, the phytonutrients in the fruits also slow down the absorption of the sugar into your bloodstream. It's almost like if you take an orange and you squeeze it until you get eight ounces of orange juice, and then you over here, you have eight ounces of Coca-Cola. It's almost like they're not the same. <laughs> if you were gonna make pancakes, for example, Dr. Greger advises that you add berries to mm -hmm. it. It is counterintuitive because fruit does have sugar in it, but mother nature, I guess, had this worked out at some point <laughs> <laughs> to where uh, herbivores like us homo sapiens are okay to eat fruit. Mm -hmm. It's it's a weird thing that people say like, oh, fruit, too much sugar in fruit. Just raw fruit. 17 people were made to eat 20 servings a day of fruit, despite the extraordinarily high fructose content of their diet, presumably about 200 grams a day, eight cans of soda worth. The investigators reported no adverse effects possible benefit, actually, for body weight, blood pressure, and insulin and lipid levels. More recently, Jenkins and colleagues put people on about a 20 servings of fruit a day diet for a few weeks, and no adverse effects on weight or blood pressure or triglycerides, and an astounding 38-point drop in LDL cholesterol. We have these wonderful fruit picking devices on our body called uh, uh, hands. And fingers. And fingers, and we can reach out and we can pick it, and then we have these wonderful teeth that bite right through the skin of the fruit and then these wonderful molars back here, and they mash up the fruit, mm -hmm. and then the digestion starts, and then we eat it just like any other primate on planet Earth. If I just said, hey, I'm going to give your child uh, a snack at school. It's gonna be a 300 calorie snack we're gonna give to all the kids in the afternoon. Would you rather I give your child 300 calories worth of candy and soda, or would you rather I give your child 300 calories of fruit? If you stick to whole plant foods, there will be carbs in whole plants, mm -hmm. but it's a package deal. You yeah. can't really compare a whole plant food to a processed high fructose corn syrupy food, even if they both have the same gram count of sugar on the nutrition facts label. Yeah. They're not the same. They're not the same. The Snickers bar has 30 grams of sugar and two bananas have 30 grams of sugar Oh, hey, toss a coin. <laughs> They're both the same. You think of a Snickers bar, oh my goodness, has all this sugar. Do you know what else it has in it? A lot of fat. fat. If you look at a Reese's cup, also candy, lots of sugar, right? 
Well, more than half of the calories, they come from fat. Cookies, for example. People always say, oh, cookies, really high in sugar. When you make cookies, you also put butter or shortening or eggs into the cookies. Potato chips, french fries. We just say, oh, uh, it's just carbs. Carbs are bad, sugar's bad. And we pay zero attention to the fat when in fact we know now, it's common knowledge, that the intramyocellular lipids, the fat that is inside the muscle tissue that interferes with insulin signaling, yes. is what is the cause of diabetes. Inevitably, somebody will say, hey, listen, if someone is a type two diabetic, they should not be drinking soda. They should not be eating candy. They should not be eating white bread. And we agree. We agree. <laughs> yes. But we're talking about the cause. The root of the problem. Not if you already have it. And this is not news. There have been studies since Sweeney in the 20s, uh, Hemsworth in the 30s, Kempner in the 40s, Singh in the 50s. Anderson in the 70s, Pritikin in the 80s, Dr. Neil Barnard in the 90s, and Hans Diehl in the 2000s, all of these researchers, these medical professionals, when you increase the fat in a person's diet, a healthy person, a person without type two diabetes, their blood sugar goes up, their insulin resistance goes up, they start to exhibit diabetic symptoms. The more fat is in the diet, not the more carbohydrate. And we challenge you, if you have doubts, to look through these studies and try to debunk them. The rise in these diseases of affluence in China over the last half century has been blamed in part on the tripling of the consumption of animal source foods. The upsurge in diabetes has been most dramatic. Diabetes rates were skyrocketing while rice consumption was going down. Animal protein is making the rice worse. We used to think like everyone else, mm -hmm. like this sugar is what is causing diabetes. But you look through these studies and it just makes sense. If you have too much sugar in the blood, your insulin is what drives that sugar into the muscle cell. Well, if your insulin isn't working properly... It's because something's interfering with insulin signaling. It was a good theory, like, oh, high blood sugar must be because you eat too much sugar. Yeah, that's a good starting point. Done. But it's been decades. <laughs> that's the beauty about science. It progresses. We learn new things. We can't just stay stuck in the past. Remember when you were a kid and you're always like, oh, my parents are never going to change. That's us now. I mean, we're not parents, but we're adults and we're kind of stubborn in a way. We're in this culture of just wanting to make things really hard for ourselves yeah. because we think that that's going to yield the greater reward. Not always true. And we know that there are a lot of diabetics people out there who are like, well, my doctor said, and my doctor. Remember, not all doctors are knowledgeable in the areas of nutrition. They no. themselves have admitted it. Be your CEO. Yes, under medical supervision, don't just throw your insulin away. No. But, you know, be honest with your doctor, tell them what you're doing, and let them know if you try a whole foods plant-based diet because your blood sugar will improve, so they might need to take your insulin down. Just as much over the decades as we've seen diabetes be caused by a high-fat diet, we've seen diabetes be reversed by a low-fat diet. Whole food, plant-based, which is different than vegan. Yeah. There's an ethical component to veganism, but whole food, plant-based diet has reversed diabetes. Neil Barnard has done it. Remember, the pharmaceutical industry is all of this. Mm -hmm. And if they can keep you on that medication for life, when you could just reverse your disease in weeks. Yeah, we're not going the full like Oliver Stone conspiracy, like Big Pharma is out to give you diabetes. No. But just think about it. If you sold a product that someone needed to take every day for the rest of their lives, and you knew that if they switched over to a whole food plant-based diet, they wouldn't need your product anymore, you might not tell them about it. My great-grandmother died of diabetes. Had we known this then, had I been older and known this then, it stinks to think that it could have been prevented. And now we have one in three people who either are at risk of diabetes or have diabetes, one in two Latinos, mm -hmm. that's half of the Latino population at risk for diabetes. And not to mention all the other issues that happen, blindness, uh, cardiovascular disease, amputations, oh my gosh. This is straight up science, just health facts, that if you cut out meat, cut out dairy, cut out eggs, your health will improve. Lean over towards whole plant foods. Don't eat purely 
veggie burgers and veggie dogs. Well, all I eat is meat and eggs all the time, every day for a decade, and I feel fine. Yeah. It's a ticking time bomb. When we're in our 20s and our 30s, uh, we feel fine now. You gotta think about this. Long term. What can I sustain for the rest of my life? What foods can I eat for the rest of my life? What foods can I cut out for the rest of my life? Minimize the processed stuff as much as possible lean more towards whole plant foods. That's something you can keep doing mm -hmm. for decades and decades and decades. We've watched paleo videos and ketogenic diet videos, five egg omelets piled with cheese and globs of mayo and mm -hmm. steak and ah. Uh, and I'm like, Processed how are you meat. pooping? They themselves admit my cholesterol is through the roof. Yeah. Guess why? <laughs> it's weird. not a secret that meat and dairy and eggs will cause your cholesterol to spike. I don't know how long you can keep that up before something really bad happens. And in fact, when people do give up those low carb diets, they gain all gain the, weight the weight back. back. Because that's why people do them in the first place is, is to, to lose, lose weight. weight. <laughs> we're so obsessed with losing weight that we're not paying attention to the things we're eating. People say, oh, I've, I've been on this low carb, high fat diet for a little while. I've already lost a lot of weight. Of course you're gonna lose weight because you're calorie restricting. Let's look at what you can't eat. If you're gonna go low carb, high fat, high animal protein, what's off the table? Okay, mm -hmm. so number one fruit, right? Mm -hmm. No fruit. Veggies. Uh, yeah, most veggies are really high in carbs. So a lot of veggies are, are out. Starches, right? Potatoes, yams, sweet potatoes. Legumes. Beans, really high in carbs. And peanuts those are, are legumes, gone. so those are Peanuts, gone. peanut butter, out bread, pasta, rice, uh, quinoa, all that stuff. What are you out. eating? And they um, say a vegan diet is restrictive. <laughs> what's left? You're just eating animal flesh, breast milk, and chicken periods. And a little bit of leafy greens, of course, yeah. right? A little bit of leafy greens. When you flip that over and you go, hey, let's go whole food plant-based, what that means is, if it's a whole plant food, I eat it. Yeah. Okay. And I've never been lighter. I'm in my 30s. I worked so hard in my 20s to get rid of the belly fat, so hard. It was just a losing battle, running every day, going to the gym all the time, trying to restrict my calories and my carbs, all the old stuff. Yeah, I just had my annual physical last week and uh, I found out I'm 153 pounds. And I believe in high school, I was 149 pounds. And post-grad school, I did get up to 172 pounds. Since going vegan, I have now dropped nearly 20 pounds. Not really doing anything differently than I was doing before I went vegan other than the vegan diet. And in the past year, we've been really pushing towards whole plant foods and cutting out sauteing veggies and oil. And so I think I'd like to quote Dr. Oz of all people. Mm -hmm. When you walk into a grocery store, you are walking into a pharmacy, my friends. And the power of those foods to reverse chronic illnesses that probably drive 60, 70% of all the healthcare money we spend in America, mm -hmm. only you control that. We know that eating vegan helps you with your, with your blood sugar, diabetes. We know that it helps you lose weight. Right. We know you'll live longer. So now that you know all that, are you going to try it or not? Let food be thy medicine. And medicine be thy food. And all doctors take the Hippocratic Oath. Yeah. So we could use a little more uh, Hippocrates in the nutrition of our everyday Americans. The takeaway from this might be, oh my gosh, Anna and Brian, they, they must be high carbers. We're not. We're whole plant fooders, if there is such a thing. If you just look at whole plant foods, if you average them all out, they all just happen to be higher in carbs, lower in fat, but that's just what plants are. Just stick to whole plant foods yeah, and you'll be fine. That's all. Mother Nature left very little room for error. Mm -hmm. We're the ones who f***ed it up. Yeah. We took corn and made it into a sugar. And then oil. And now for some vegan news. So Nike released a designer vegan shoe, the Air Max 97 One, and people went nuts. The lines were long in Virginia. They had to cancel mm -hmm. because 500 people were in line and it, it, it was mayhem. Yeah. They had to cancel the premiere. Almost like there's a demand for vegan footwear. <laughs> Weird. And lastly, in the vegan community, there's been a bit of a stir up because Tyson, has increased their investment in Beyond Meat. Uh, Tyson famous for killing a lot of chickens mm -hmm. and selling them to human beings. And lots of abuse. Yeah. I think people have this thing where they're like, oh, it's an evil corporation and the corporation should die. 
and make room for this new upstart beyond meat to become the new thing. Mm -hmm. Well, Tyson's not going to do that. Tyson wants to stay on top. They believe in it enough. They see that this is becoming a thing yeah. and it's going to get bigger and bigger and they want a part in it. That's a good thing. It's kind of like the people who only want to go to vegan restaurants. How are we going to change other companies yeah. if we don't show them that we demand that they too get on the vegan bandwagon? We got to change minds. We can't just like zoom in and be like, mm -mm. no, we still buy food at Whole Foods, right? And Whole Foods yeah. sells meat. We can show them that all we buy from them is vegan products. I don't think Tyson would be interested in yes. increasing its stake in Beyond Meat if people like you didn't support Beyond Meat in the first place. So guys, we hope you liked this video. And if you did, please hit that thumbs up button down below. It really helps us out, lets us know you like what you're watching. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. subscribe and and hit that notification bell. Right there. That way you'll be <laughs> alerted when we put out something new, which we will do for you every week. Follow us on whatever social media is your preferred social media mm -hmm. and check out our Etsy store for some cool vegan swag. And as always, thank you so much to our patrons on Patreon. Thank and if you. you like what we do and you would like to support the show, you can become a patron on Patreon as well. The link is in the description. Yeah, we have a couple of people donating a dollar a month and that's awesome. Thank you so much. Honestly, no amount is too small. Bye. Bye. <laughs>